Today on Control Freaks, it's story time with a tale about a new release from Lionhead Studios, a wrap up of games that are great for kids, and we go behind enemy lines in an invisible war. So sit back, tune in and veg out as we sneak, slice and sponge our way through another half hour of interactive gaming goodness. Video games have supplied the inspiration and stories for movies for years, with some success and a lot of failure. Tomb Raider, Resident Evil and Final Fantasy to name a few. Now it's Doom's turn, with Hollywood turning again to the popular culture of games to put bums on seats. As reported on the Universal website, Doom is already in production. Starring Carl Urban from Lord of the Rings, The Chronicles of Riddick and the Bourne Supremacy, The Rock and Rosamund Pike. Rumour has it the movie is based on the latest instalment of the game. We can expect Doom to hit cinemas around August 2005. Following up on our recent Halo 2 piracy story, it seems gamers with modded consoles are unable to play Halo 2 on Xbox Live. It's not known how Bungie have managed to detect the modified units, but the internet forums are alive with disappointed gamers. Analysts believe the measures are in place not only to suppress piracy, but also to protect the quality of the controlled Xbox Live gaming experience and prevent cheating. It's hard to believe that we've been gaming for 25 years. The first real blockbuster video game is making a comeback. Taito is set to release a new batch of the original Space Invaders units to the US to capitalise on the revival of classic games. Next thing you know, we'll all be back at the store buying an Atari. It's time to take an epic journey into the streets of Hong Kong as Shenmue 2 leaps out of the Dreamcast and into the Xbox. Ryo's mission is to find his father's killer, Lan Dai, on the streets of Hong Kong. That's him. Wander from person to person looking for one little piece of info that will help take him to the next clue. One Dai is that way. Graphically, each and every character he meets has their own unique facial features. The city itself is extremely detailed, which would almost explain the constant loading screens. He'll be persistent, but you don't have to buy it. Rio's cash flow is limited, so you will need to find ways to earn money. Lug crates, carry books, or work at the corner gambling station. If that doesn't tickle your fancy, then how about arm wrestling or just pawning off some of your gear? Martial arts masters will help by teaching him new moves so that during the fight sequences he can use different punches, kicks, grappling holds and a great variety of combos. For something different, QTEs or quick timer events are used during chase scenes and some quick fights. These have you pressing the correct corresponding button to avoid tripping, colliding or just being hit. The abundance of background city noises match their surroundings perfectly, with an atmospheric soundtrack that ups the tempo during action scenes. What were you going, you punk? This is a lengthy game played out at a very slow pace with a lot of computer-guided scenes, so expect to put in some long hours. Those with heaps of dedication, patience and a comfy gaming chair will reap the rewards of this epic tale. A morning star shall glisten alone. Coming up on Control Freaks, some intriguing biological espionage and an amazing interactive tale. Control Freaks. <laughs> We got our hands on some of THQ's new lineup, so here's a sneak peek. As usual, the franchise machine is in full motion at THQ, and there's a big showing of popular Nickelodeon properties. SpongeBob SquarePants is back in another bizarre and wacky adventure, full of colour, quirkiness, and kooky humour of the cartoon series. Bubble power. SpongeBob SquarePants is aimed directly at fans of the series. Gameplay seems quite simple and will suit the kids it's aimed at. The 
Barely Odd Parents game looks just like the cartoon and again is loaded with that freaky fun Nick is famous for. Like most cartoon franchise titles, the Fairly Odd Parents really seems to only appeal to fans of the series. It is, however, a very popular cartoon and there should be no shortage of loyal followers ready to make the crossover to console. The very cool, very smart and very short Jimmy Neutron is back in another game and adventure. Jimmy Neutron and the Attack of the Twonkies is the next instalment in the popular cartoon Brainiac's Juggernaut. Who would have thought that a short film about a boy and his rocket could go on to spawn movies, TV series and video games? Nickelodeon have also jumped on the iToy craze, with a collection of games drawing inspiration from the Nick lineup. Again, it's kids they're aiming at, and what better interface for the littlies than iToy? Kids love it, and with so few iToy options out there, THQ should be onto a winner. The very popular TAC has returned in TAC 2, and this very fun and excellently produced game series should keep fans very happy. Also on offer is a couple of new Game Boy releases. After a release on the Spectrum Sinclair and the Commodore 64, Sable Wolf, a unique platform adventure, has finally made it to the current generation. Popular in Europe in its time, to the rest of the world, Sable Wolf should be a breath of fresh air for gamers. The biggie for the year is Sonic Advance 3. In a triumphant return to gaming, Sonic has run, jumped and smashed his way to his third Game Boy release. I guess the big question is, when will Sonic return to the console? We'll bring you the full review of all these titles as the series continues. Four years have passed since the mortal races banded together and stood united against the might of the Burning Legion. Though Azeroth was saved, the tenuous pact between the Horde and the Alliance has all but evaporated. The drums of war thunder once again.
Deep in the forest of Albion lay the small town of Oakvale. Here lived a boy and his family, a boy dreaming of greatness, but one day being a hero. Fable is an RPG action adventure game with lots of choices for the characters and the people that are playing them to make. Sometimes he imagined himself as a noble knight or a powerful wizard. And other times he dreamt he'd be an evil warrior. But in all his dreams of greatness, he could not possibly imagine the power of the destiny that lay before him. I work at Microsoft in the test department. My name is Mike Forge. Um, we're the last line of defense for the games before they're released to the public, so we get to do a lot of interesting stuff with it and see a lot of things before they're released. It's a lot of fun. The scenario of the game is that uh, the character starts as a boy, and his job is to get his sister a birthday present. So he goes around town, and which it kind of demonstrates some of the good morality and the bad morality you can have as, as a player. He goes around town and does deeds to get paid from uh, gold pieces so he can buy his sister a present. And in the process of doing that, he can break the law or he can help people out. And after doing that and getting his sister a present, bandits raid the town and kill his family, basically. So he's hiding, his family gets taken away or slaughtered, and so does the rest of the town. So he decides from that point on that he's gonna spend the rest of his life trying to bring out the revenge in that. He gets met by a, um, another hero, an older hero that takes him to the guild, the Heroes Guild, and trains him in all the arts of weaponry uh, with the archery and the, and the sword and he learns his will powers which is his magics and then he progresses through graduating in the guild and after graduation he's free to choose which path he decides to do his ultimate goal is still the, to get revenge for his family but the way he gets it is can be a lot of different ways thanks for saving me i'm gonna tell everyone about you you can go through and be the hero of the people and when you go into town everybody loves you they cheer for you they clap they're really excited to see you, or you can decide to be really devious or evil, and you can break into people's homes, you can kill people, you can steal from them. There's just all this type of things that you can do. And the, uh, the reaction of the villagers are all based on that, and we call it renown, which is basically how famous you are and what you're famous for. So what you do in one town will carry over into the rest of the world. So as a player, you have to make your decisions on if what I'm doing now is going to affect where I'm going to be later or it's going to hurt what I want to do later. So it's really cool. You know, the, the player gets a lot of choices, but the end result is still revenge. For many years now, you have worked hard to earn yourselves the title of hero. Today, that apprenticeship ends and you go out into the world to do great deeds. Deeds that will bring you the gratitude of thousands or strike fear into their hearts. These are dark times. The shadows of Albion are stirring, and strange winds are blowing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more like an action-adventure RPG, because there is a lot of action elements to it, but it is an RPG also, and it's got elements of all of that, which I think is going to help you know, uh, make it more, more of a broad audience, help make it more available to everybody. And because um, it has all the stuff for leveling up your hero, it has all the things for getting all the different experience, how to spend them and where you get them from, in addition to the fact that it has a great combat system. It's being developed at Lionhead Studios over in England with Big Blue Box. Peter, it's a Peter Molyneux title, so we got his brain working on it too, which is amazing. The guy just, he has so much creativity, I don't know where he stores it all. Um, so we have them and they're a great team, great developers, a really good imagination, a wonderful art team. It starts over there, they put all the work together, they send it to us, and we basically try to break it every way we possibly can. And they get the fixes in, and we try to, at the end of the day to have a great, fun game that delivers what we promise to the users, and I think we have them. It'll be released on Xbox, and should be a big hit. Everybody loves it now. Next on Control Freaks, wheeling and dealing in a fight for freedom. Good job. Evacuated. Trainees. Gave the order myself. What did you tell them? I told them to run. The security.
security bots have acquired the target. We're too late! Helipad, let's go. The much anticipated sequel to the blockbuster hit Deus Ex is here. This sequel first person shooter style RPG crossover is set 70 years after the events of the original in a world beset by terrorist factions fighting each other in a secret and invisible war. We aren't equipped to fight a war. We're going to change the terms of engagement. It's our war, not theirs. We don't need cities or armies. We have the cells of human bodies. As in the previous game, there are no clear allies or a single enemy, and you must make decisions throughout the game as to who you'll help, as you are constantly uncovering new information, which leads you to reevaluate your standing with the game's various factions. I could fight you, I guess, but okay. How about I give you a down payment on a leather jacket if you tell me about this Mr. P? A good story is nothing without some action, and there's plenty to be found here. Whether you prefer the stealth approach, hacking into computer networks to disable cameras and sneaking past guards, or you're the type to just run in with all barrels firing, you'll find what you're looking for in Deus Ex. While the skill system from the last game is gone, bio modification is still used, which keeps the RPG feel alive. Bio mods range from regeneration to hacking to invisibility. It seems that every mission or hostile situation can be approached from many different angles, with a huge range of weapons, gadgets and bio-mod abilities to aid you, whatever you do, leaving you feeling a bit like a kid in a candy store. Visuals in Deus Ex have broken some new ground, being one of the first games boasting dynamic lighting. The models are tight and impressive, and the cutscenes are compelling, as they should be in today's games. The game's physics engine, on the other hand, leaves a lot to be desired, with objects and victims moving with almost weightlessness abandon. With the power to choose your allies or enemies, and to use some nasty double-crossing diplomacy, the almost open-ended nature of the gameplay is very appealing. Fans of the original might be disappointed by the toning down of the RPG elements of this game, with no choice of skills and no in-depth character creation. However, this makes for faster, more dynamic gameplay, and Invisible War is an excellent game in its own right. They showed us what was really going on behind the scenes and freed us. I'm grateful, and you should be too.
dance and I need a kiss. Next week, after today's teaser, we review Fable on the Xbox, take a hit out on Centre Court, and we talk to the panel beaters behind a new driving classic. So slip into your flame-proof crash suit as we fire, burn and explode our way through the raging digital inferno that is computer and video games. Control freaks! <laughs>